Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here with an introduction video to sequences. We're just talking about what they are, the very basics of them, how to read them, uh, and how to get started using them. So here I just have a sequence. Uh, you can tell that it's a sequence. It's basically an ordered list of terms. So I have a term and then a comma, and each of these are terms in my sequence. I have these curly brackets. Uh, we call them braces in math technically. That just means that we're listing a set of objects. If you've done anything with like a set notation before, uh, you would have seen these brackets. But these curly braces basically mean that we're talking about sequences in some sort of notation. Another way that we can say that you're dealing with uh, sequences and that you kind of have a frame of reference of what we're talking about is this A with a subscript N. We would say A sub N here. Um, this is kind of similar to if you're dealing with functions, we will put F of X and you know that we're talking about some sort of an equation. It passes the vertical line test and things like that. So here A sub N just tells us that we're dealing with a list of terms, an order list of terms called a sequence. So we will usually say that A sub N is equal to this list here. So if I want to refer to the list in general as one object, then I will talk about a sub n. Each of these terms, again, it's an ordered list. So we have a first term, a second term. They come in the specific order. It's a different sequence. If we jumble up the terms, this is a little bit different than a set with a set. If you just throw all the same stuff in there, it doesn't matter the order you put it in. But for sequences, it's an ordered list. So there's a definite first, second, third, fourth term. If we want to refer to a specific term, then we will talk about those using uh, a sub n, but we'll actually put the term number in place. So our first term will be called a sub 1, our second term will be called a sub 2, and then a 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, etc. You'll notice we have this uh, ellipsis on the end. That just simply means that the pattern that we've established with the terms already written in the list, then that pattern is going to continue from there on. So if you can kind of see, we start at two and we go to four and eight and 16 and 32. What that pattern is telling us is that we're doubling from one term to the next. So we're going to continue to double as we move forward in the list of terms here. So we don't need to necessarily write out all of the terms, especially if we have many, many terms. We can also go ahead and relate the term itself to a formula that might produce that term. And if all of those formulas are the same, you'll notice here, my a1 is 2 to the 1, and my a2 is 2 squared, a3 is 2 cubed, etc. So it looks like the power of 2, 2 to the 4th, is the 4th term. 2 to the 5 is the 5th term. So we can write an actual formula for this saying that a sub n is 2 to the n, meaning the number of term matches the power of 2 that will give you the value for that term. Here I have another sequence. Notice I've called it b sub n so you don't confuse it with the first one. That's like with functions when we say here's a function f of x and then we give you another one and we need to call it something else so we just call it g of x, the next, uh, next letter in the alphabet. So here my b sub n starts out the same as my a sub n. In other words, the terms seem to fit the formula that they're powers of 2. What you might notice also, though, is that the ellipsis is in a different place in my b sub n. It is in the middle versus being at the end. So in a sub n, what we're saying is uh, with the ellipsis at the end, this is just going to continue indefinitely. Pattern continues, but there is no stopping point. When we put the ellipsis in the middle, that is signaling to us that we are going to continue the established pattern, but... Uh, because there are terms listed after it, you can see this 4096 is really the end of the list. And so we're going to continue this pattern until we get to 4096, and then this sequence stops. So a sub n is going to go on indefinitely, and b sub n is going to go on with the same pattern, but stop at some point. So our top sequence here is called an infinite sequence. There's an infinite number of terms if we keep listing using this pattern forever. Our bottom one is called a finite sequence. It does not have an infinite number of terms it eventually ends, it has some stopping point, finally. If you have an explicit formula for the sequence, uh, which is basically just a formula that involves its term number, then you can simply plug in any number you want to find any term you want. So if you wanted to know the 12th term of the list, you could just simply plug in 12 for n and figure it out instantly without having to list all of the terms going up to the 12th term, for example. So you'll just simply substitute whatever term number you want into the formula when you have an explicit formula, and that will give you whatever term it is you need. We're gonna do an example of this right now. We have 
our formula a sub n equals negative 1 to the n, then we have times the quantity n plus 1, all of that is over n squared, we are going to find the first five terms. So if I'm finding the first term, that would be a1. If I'm finding a1, I just plug in 1 in the explicit formula here everywhere there's an n. So that will be negative 1 to the 1 times the quantity 1 plus 1 all over 1 squared. So here I have a negative 1 to the 1 would just be negative 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then on the bottom, 1 squared would just be 1. So we have negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2 divided by 1, which would be negative 2 for our first term. Our second term, which would be a sub 2, so that will be negative 1 to the n now becomes negative 1 squared. My n plus 1 quantity becomes 2 plus 1. And then my n squared on the bottom now becomes 2 squared. So negative 1 squared is going to give me a positive 1. For the first expression, 2 plus 1 will give me 3. For the second expression on top, and we'll get 2 times 2 on the bottom, which is 4. So our second term for this sequence would be 3 fourths. For the third term, a3, we would have then negative 1 cubed. n plus 1 would be 3 plus 1. And on the bottom, n squared becomes 3 squared. So here, an odd power of negative 1 is going to be negative 1. 3 plus 1 will give us 4, and then on the bottom we will have 3 squared, which is 9, and that will give us negative 4 over 9 for our third term. For the fourth term, we will have negative 1 to the 4. n plus 1 becomes 4 plus 1, and then 4 squared. So we get an even power of negative 1 on the top. That will be a positive 1 for that. 4 plus 1 will give us 5. And then 4 squared on the bottom becomes 16. So we get positive 5 over 16 for this one. Let's go ahead and do the last one. I'll do it over here. So the fifth term, a5, if we just want the first five terms, then that would be negative 1 to the 5. n plus 1 becomes 5 plus 1 and n squared becomes 5 squared. And obviously you might be able to see these in a couple less steps than I'm doing, and that's fine. Uh, negative 1 to an odd power is going to be negative 1. 5 plus 1 is going to give us 6 for the next thing. And then 5 squared gives us 25. So we actually get negative 6 on top over 25. So if we wanted to just write the collection of the first five terms, remember we use our braces, our curly brackets, and list them in order. So we would say the first term, negative 2. The second term, 3 fourths. The third term would be negative 4 over 9. A4 is 5 over 16. And A5 is negative 6 over 25. Okay, so hopefully that gets you started on what sequence are, how we write them down, the sum of the notations that we use, how we get some terms just to start with. Check out our next video in our sequence series. We'll see you then.